planes, heavy presence, ramparts, weapons sighted, the war. Human beings, hunted, their muscle carved off bone, sliced into meager portions, then served to a starving populace. A sinister secret, all in service to a quota designed strictly to strike fear into already subservient hearts all in service to a quota that accomplished nothing beyond the creation of a debilitating disease. The tick. The tick is what they call it. <laughs> An apt name, given the condition of those burdened by it, many of whom we have taken into our fold. And how did Tower leadership decide to handle this tick crisis? To keep those afflicted from discovering why they were sick. And when that misguided strategy failed and the truth spread like lush Spanish moss, what did these heartless scoundrels do? Did they spare no effort and exhaust every resource to correct their wrong and treat those poor afflicted souls? No. No, they did not. What they chose to do instead was to exile those sick with the tick, condemning them to certain doom even though their own policies planted the seed for the disease in the first place. And they call us barbaric. There are atrocities that will grip the psyche of a people with such ferocity that I dare say those subjected to them may never recover their sanity. This is one of those atrocities makes my insides churn with anger. But this is my commitment to you, New Orleans. I will not stand by idly and allow injustice to continue to flourish within this city. Those who sit atop the tarnished tower throne will be brought low by the reclaimed and punished for their transgressions. If it keeps on raining, Levee's gonna break. If it keeps on raining, levee's gonna break. The water come in, I have no place to stay. All last night, I sat on the levee and moaned. All last night, I sat on the levee and moaned. Thinking about my baby. Am I happy home? Oh, if it keeps on raining, love is gonna break. Oh, if it keeps on raining, love is gonna break. And all these people have no place to stay. Now look here, mama, what am I to do? Now look here, mama, what am I to do? I ain't got nobody to sell my troubles to. I work on the levee, mama, both day and night. I work on the levee, mama, both day and night. I ain't got nobody to keep the water away. On the levee, mama 
come on night and day. Casey, you there? We cannot be afraid to ignite our passions, even in the midst of the nightmare. No. It is precisely then when the nightmare's claws are digging into the thin flesh of our fading hope that we must defy the nightmare and live. Truly live. And make no mistake, mere survival is not living. Scrounging for crumbs like a timid field mouse, begging some simpleton who bumbled her way into the role of heartless dictator for guidance. <laughs> not me. I choose to embrace everything that makes me human. I choose to carve my own way through this new world. I am not a lowly animal. I should not be acting like one. Humor me for a moment while I recount an old bio legend. Many of you listening will no doubt recall the campfire tale of Charlie Boy, who met his end at the hands of the Sukiyong at the Bogachita Swamp. But a lesser known Charlie Boy tale is what I will regale you with now. As a youth, Charlie Boy was not one to adhere to rules. In fact, you could say the young lad was a bit of a miscreant. Thieving, vandalizing, terrorizing. Mischief was in his blood. And mischief is what made the man. On a sweltering summer's eve, one of those Nola nights when the air was so thick and hot a dragonfly could barely get airborne. Charlie Boy set out from his home in the 17th Ward and skulked on over to the Garden District with revenge thumping in his chest. His family had been wronged by some rich folk landlord types who were scheming to get Charlie Boy and his family evicted for no good reason at all. Now. Charlie Boy knew there wasn't much he could do, being just a 12-year-old beanpole. But he was not about to sit idly by and let old money greed ruin his family without landing a counterpunch. So out of chicken wire, Charlie Boy molded a huge head and put an old Pulcinella mask on it. The nose stretching down to the chin. He painted the whole thing black as night. With the head on his shoulders, Charlie Boy stood a gangly seven feet tall. A messenger from the underworld. When he found the mansion of his oppressors, midnight about to strike, he slipped over the backyard wall and scanned the opulent home for a bedroom window to tap upon and give the sleeper inside the fright of their life. Make them think death itself had come for them. But there was no need. The patriarch himself was lounging outside, ten Sazeracs deep in his nightly drunken stupor, half asleep and unaware. Charlie Boy knew this was his moment. He crept up and stood unnaturally tall behind this slob of a man, reached out and grabbed a spotty patch of thin hair atop his head and yanked. The man's head snapped back, eyes wide with terror as he stared up into the looming face of death. 
and his heart just stopped. In an instant, a 12-year-old boy was transformed into a man of power. A man who understood what a glorious weapon fear could be. A man who would never again allow anyone to tread upon him without consequence. In an instant, a legend was born. What are beasts? What slickers in the mind's eye when you hear the word? I would wager that most of you visualize the dead that now walk among us. Those vacant eyes, clouded over. Those devouring mouths, always slack. And the smell, yeah, that probably comes to mind too. Rot. Some of you may conjure up a beast of the field, a bull or a swine, wishing their finest cuts were upon your plate. Fewer still might consider the beast of the wild, a black bear wading across a stream, a nasty swamp gator more than a century old, drifting through the bow, searching, hungry for a critter with warm blood to sink her teeth into. The nature of the beast is not what I am asking you to contemplate. What I encourage you to mull over for the moment is what beasts all have in common. Big, small, fearsome or timid, the common thread between them all is the limit of their thoughts. Think about that. A beast is limited in thought. A beast has a one-track mind. A beast thinks only about its own survival. It doesn't care about anything else. So allow me to pose a question. Are we simply beasts? Are we so beaten down, so base, that the only pursuit we can conceive is survival? Are we no longer capable of dreaming, of creation? Have we so completely blinded ourselves to the great achievements of our glorious past that we are willing to let it all disintegrate into dust because we are afraid to die? The way I see it, the answer to every single one of these questions should be a resounding no. Hey, Taurus, the intel you've been gathering for me has been enlightening to say the least. Georgia is planning on a mass exile in the very near future. Many lives are going to be at risk. I have a few things to discuss with you. I know we were going to try to avoid the face-to-face, -face, but the plan I'm formulating warrants it. I appreciate your ear. Meet me in the same spot as the first time, churchyard. Thanks for all you're doing. May.
I'll get right to the point. After looking over the intel you brought me, it seems like Georgia is planning to toss out a large number of people real soon. A lot of lives are going to be in jeopardy. Good news is we have some hope. The map you scored shows a safe way out of Nola. Just need to buy some time and some space to organize exiles on a large scale. Get them ready to move. I think the reserve is going to provide the opening I need. Georgia and the tower are so obsessed with it, I don't think they'll be concerned with what I'm doing for a short while. And with the reclaimed salivating over it too, once the reserve is unlocked and revealed to the world, courtesy of you, there's going to be a bloodbath. You can count on that. And that's when I'm making my move. Window won't be open long, though. If you're tight, I gotta take a chance. I don't know, May. Sounds risky. Trying to get that many people out at once without Georgia noticing. You've seen the posters everywhere. She's trying to turn the whole city against you. Maybe you should just get out with Ombra while you have the chance. You can't be serious. After all the work my daughter and I have put in to make this dream a reality, you think I should turn my back on the people I've been working so hard to help? No. I'm all in, Taurus. I appreciate your concern, but we are going to uphold our promise to these people. Do or die. I will leave the key to the reserve in a drop spot for you. Lantern will be on when it's there. When the shit goes down for the reserve, if you're thinking it's all too much and you want out, come find us. The Exodus could use someone with your particular set of talents. My hope is you won't be a fool, but my mind suspects you'll be too hooked on that damn reserve pipe dream just like everybody else. All I can do is wish you good luck and good judgment, Taurus. Take care of yourself.
Casey, you there? Casey, good news. May said she would give me the key we need. Good news? Help, tourist. I would classify that as fucking outstanding news. No, look, I, I don't want to jinx it, but... No, uh... You know what? I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Best not to risk the jinx. Let let's just forge ahead. One step at a time. Okay, so, um... The part to repair the final pump. Gosh, I... I, I don't have much to go on. It's weird. There's been really faint chatter about it on a few channels. And been nothing but static for months. Uh, th there's an outpost called Bastion, set up in a heavily defended duplex home. Uh, barricades and optimal sight lines. The reclaimed currently control it. Now, the place has been a hotbed of conflict between Tower and Reclaimed for a while. From what I'm hearing, that's where it is, so be ready for a shitstorm. Good luck, and hey, keep your head on a swivel. Hey, Casey. How's it going? Oh, hey, tourist. Honestly, I'm a little freaked out. What's bothering you? It's just... I'm so close to getting out of here. And the closer I get, the harder it is for me to imagine what it's gonna be like out there, you know? I mean... I, I know it's not the same world it was before I was locked in, and, and, and I can accept that, you know? But it, it seems like, in order to make it out there, I'm gonna have to become something I'm not. Violent. Ruthless. Willing to hurt anyone for even looking at me sideways. It's simple, Casey. Adapt to the violence, embrace it, or die. Is that what you did? Huh? Or oh, were you always the way you are? A and yes, this is me freaking out a bit. But there's a big part of me that's scared to meet you face to face. I mean, look, I, I don't really know you, but I know what you're capable of. And frankly, it turns my stomach when I really think about it. You'll see. I'm not scared, Casey. You just don't want to fuck with me. That's all. Thanks for the advice. You know, I gotta hand it to you, tourist. A conversation with you is always enlightening. Even entertaining sometimes. But well, that's about all I can handle right now. I'm gonna take a few minutes to myself. I'll talk to you later. My dear New Orleans. I had the most wondrous dream. I stood outside the tower barricade, alone, gazing up at the monolith to oppression as silent flames crawled greedily up its concrete sides and black smoke choked the sky. I approached the barricade and it crumbled into dust before me. And in the tower yard, Reclaimed warriors stood, with torches in hand, proud and defiant. Their masks alive, dark, swirling oceans of endless power. Throughout the yard were statues of fearful human forms molded from ash. Upon closer inspection, I realized that the statues were our enemies. Defeated, left vulnerable. Even to the slightest touch, a soft breeze or a light rain. And in a blink, the flames and the statues were gone. 
and the sky a clear and cloudless blue. Lush gardens stretched for as far as the eye could see, and where the ashen forms of our enemies once cowered, glorious sculptures of reclaimed heroes carved from marble and bronze now stood. The tower itself transformed from a gray and lifeless symbol of despair into a vibrant canvas full of life. Every inch of the exterior covered in technicolor art, a collaboration of hope and human spirit. I could hear music pouring from the windows, soulful sounds our ears have not enjoyed for ages. From up on the balconies, future generations, influenced by the reclaimed creed, waved down to me, their masks alive, colors beyond comprehension cascading from their joyful visages. Then I awoke from the dream, and clarity overtook me. The time of the reclaimed is nigh, but in order for our vision of reality to overthrow the limited scope currently dictating the direction of this city, we must steel ourselves for the conflict to come and be prepared to fight a most certainly bloody battle with a ferocity never before matched in the theater of war. We are outnumbered, yes, but we will never be overcome. Human beings, hunted, their muscle carved off bone, sliced into meager portions, then served to a starving populace. A sinister secret, all in service to a quota designed strictly to strike fear into already subservient hearts all in service to a quota that accomplished nothing beyond the creation of a debilitating disease. The tick. The tick is what they called it. <laughs> A apt name, given the condition of those first five years.
you made it. I didn't doubt that you would, of course, but my patience was beginning to be tested. <laughs> Let's start with a formal introduction. You are the tourist, and I am John Baptiste. JB for short. There now, we can proceed to matters of more profound consequence. It is my understanding that this gizmo here would be of use to you. It's all yours. Consider it a gift. And when we are finished with our conversation, I will provide you with the missing dial that you'll need to operate it. Sound fair? Sounds fair. Terrific. Now, I prefer to play it straight. Once I received word that you were collecting these devices, and to what purpose, I saw an opportunity to connect with the city's most illustrious survivor and have a chat about the reserve. So I made it a priority to acquire one through various means I will not divulge. And now here you are. It is my hope when I am through, you will see the reserve for what it is. Nothing more than a crutch holding back the people of this fine city from regaining themselves. You've piqued my interest. Go on. I am a firm believer in the greatness of humankind, our ingenuity, our art, our towering scientific achievements. This reserve nonsense, even if the rumors about what may be inside it exceed our wildest dreams, the bounty will only prolong our addiction to survivalism as the only path in life. It will stifle our creativity. It will eventually lead to our withering doom. Now, this is the proposal that I have for you. Continue your search for the reserve. And when you unearth it, which I have the utmost confidence you will, destroy it. These four numbers will disable the entire flood contingency system. Mother Nature will rage through the reserve and take care of the rest. One, zero, zero, six. Flood the reserve and set us all free. Give this still glorious city the jumpstart it needs to refocus on something much grander than mere survival. Grant us hope, tourist, and thank you most sincerely for hearing me out. And let's keep this chat between us, if that's all right. I'm not sure my comrades would see the big picture benefits of removing the reserve from the equation. The floor is now yours, my friend. Anything on your mind that requires clarity? I want your perspective on the reserve. Uh-huh. How did you find this code to flood the reserve? One of my scouts came across the corpse of a National Guardsman in Rampart High School. The body had a manual for a bunker's flood defense system. I put two and two together. Why choose me to destroy the reserve? Because you're the one best equipped to find the accursed place, and I trust you will do the right thing when you do. Call it a hunch. If the rumors about what's inside the reserve are true, wouldn't it benefit the reclaimed to get your hands on it? You are absolutely correct. But once those supplies are gone, then what? The same old fruitless pursuits. And there is the very distinct possibility that the tower gets to it before we do. The only way to guarantee this city will move forward in the proper direction is to remove the reserve from the equation entirely. I have some other questions for you, JB. I'm curious about the reclaimed. Yes. What's with the gory rituals? First one was a man I knew well in my brief tenure as a tower grunt. I'd even called him a friend. Trip was his name. Snuck up on me in the middle of sleep. Tried to slit my throat. Still carry the scar. 
Well, long story short, Trip was no match for me. I maimed him. Something awful, really. And I dragged his body about a mile all the way to the southern bump, which at the time was the most highly trafficked exit from the tower. I found an old oak, hung him upside down from it so his lifeblood would spill rapidly into the soil. And upon his chest, I pinned a note that read, Keep him coming. And just like that, I became the most feared boogeyman Nola has seen since the Axe Man. Once I had fear on my side, the rest just blossomed naturally. Those with nowhere else to go wanted what I had, so they listened. And they learned. I empowered them. That's all people want. A sense that their lives still have some meaning. I've heard snippets about the reclaimed philosophy. But it would be enlightening to hear it from you. It's simple, really. We want to live purposeful lives. Reclaim the world and our humanity along with it. Mere survival is so petty. It's beneath us. Forcing people to focus solely on survival. It's cruel, really. I believe we must invest in a future of our own design. Life is not worth living otherwise. The reclaimed have made quite a mark on the city. How did the movement get started? After my exile from the tower for insubordination, I took to raiding their supply lines. Rather efficiently, I might add. No one ever got hurt, and other exiles clamored to join my operations. Needless to say, Mama and her cohorts were not pleased with my exploits. And they sent several communications asking me to cease my pillaging or there'd be consequences. <laughs> Of course, I refused. Politely. No one was gonna dictate the terms of my existence anymore. But it wasn't until the tower started sending thugs out to track me down and in me that I decided it was time to send a message of my own. What's with the gory rituals? First one was a man I knew. Once I had fear on my side, the rest just blossomed naturally. Those with nowhere else to go wanted what I had, so they listened. And they learned. I have some other questions for you, JB. I've heard enough. Fair enough. Then we are finished here. The Dow, as promised. Godspeed, tourist. finally meet, tourist. After all the hype, you're not exactly what I expected. I'm Georgia. Maybe you've heard of me, maybe not. I could give two shits. What does concern me is the man inside the building you just stepped out of. Mm. We tracked him here. 
Heard the commotion upstairs. Did you kill that fool? You won't have to worry about JB and his yammering anymore. The tide has fucking turned. Thanks for doing what needed to be done. From this point on, just keep steering clear of the tower, and there won't be any issues between you and me. I'm not a fan of issues, in case you couldn't tell. And when this shit with the reserve pops, I'll make sure tower troops have orders to steer clear of you. I don't even like the way you walk. Another lost soul.
I'm back, Casey. Ready to repair the pump. You still alive? Yeah, alive, but almost swimming. No turning back after this, tourist. We have to get after it. I'm running out of time. You prepared? No, need some time. Not much time to spare, tourist. Thank you, and goodbye. Maybe our paths will cross again. Maybe not. Guess we'll just have to wait and see. Personally, I think you should follow us out of this doomed city. Like I said, you will be an asset to the Exodus. But you need to follow whatever story resides in your head. Just know that you are a part of my and Ombra's story. Along with the stories of a couple dozen folks who might have been dead by the end of the week if it wasn't for your efforts. Amber wanted to give you one more drawing. I think she hopes it'll sway your decision. Good luck. And I hope you find what you're searching for. Okay, back to it. All right, let's get back to it. I'm back, Casey. Ready to repair the pump. You still alive? Yeah, alive, but almost swimming. No turning back after this, tourist. We have to get after it. I'm running out of time. You prepared? I'm ready. Okay, serial number first. Seven four nine zero 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 three dash one three. All right. Um, set valve A to thirty eight. Valve A thirty eight. Green. Valve B needs to be set at forty four. Valve B forty four. A B double green. You're a machine tourist. Okay. Valve C. Set it to sixty. Valve C to sixty. Green all around. Button press and we are calibrated. Excellent. Okay. The last pump is not far from the cemetery. It's in a concrete industrial shed in the old jazz park, near the statue of the musicians. Should be easy to find. The key you got from May unlocks the door to the shed. Now once the part is installed, contact me and I'll get the pump system started. We are so close, tourist. Access to the reserve for you. Get the fuck out of the reserve for me. Oh, I can't wait.
Casey, come in. It's go time. Awesome, tourist. Never doubted you. That's good, Casey. It's a mistake to underestimate me. Oh, believe me. I know. All right, I'm gonna power everything up. It should work, but you never know. Guess we need to be prepared for anything. Okay, here it goes. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm gonna power everything up. It should work, but you never know. Guess we need to be prepared for anything. Okay, here it goes. Fingers crossed. Oh, yes! It's working! What a fucking relief! I can hear the pumps firing up overhead! Oh, fuck. Wait, what? Well, what's the problem? Something going on out there? Yeah. A building lit up in the distance. Looks like the church. Floodlights popped on or something. The whole city's gonna know where the reserve is now. Both sides are gonna descend on this place like flies on shit. I need to get the fuck out of here. Now. God damn it, tourist. I still can't open the door. Okay, okay, uh, uh think, Casey, think. Uh, 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 all right, um, I think I know what's going on. The doors won't open until the pump system knows where to redirect the water. Uh, let's see, uh, there's a manual flow control inside the church. Now, you need to get over here quick. Open the valve to one of the rooms so the water has a place to go. Then the doors will unlock, and I can get the hell out, tourist. Come on, please. Please. I don't want to be stuck in this place when a bunch of nuts with guns show up feeling greedy. And neither do you. Casey, the goddamn wine. About to put my fist through his teeth. We did what we had to do. What happened here? Umbra. She ran after her mom as they were taking her away. Right into the middle of everything. It was a crossfire. Where's Umbra's mother? Where's May? I don't know. She ran off. Into the shadows. We, we were desperate. To get back into the tower, we thought... We, we thought if we turned May in, the tower would take us back. Take care of us. <laughs> we fucked up. I warned them. That it was a terrible idea. That something bad would happen. But they didn't listen. Fucked up so bad. Fuck you. Yeah. 
Got a problem? <laughs> These things just keep coming.
Tourist, come on. Tourist, come in. Time is short. Tourist, are you there? I'm here, Casey. At the controls. Oh, thank God. Okay, um, uh, I I'm not sure how much time we have left before my room is underwater. Activating the pumps just fucked everything up. The room is filling up fast. Look, look, um, I, I need you to redirect the flood flow to the armory. A and quick. Look, I know I promised you all the weapons you'd ever be able to carry, but I... I'm sorry. We have to let them go. What happened with the pumps? I went through all that trouble for nothing? I, I don't know what happened. Maybe the system was already pushed too far. Point is, you need to redirect the flow, and now, or I am dead. I know I sold you a bill of goods that I can't deliver on anymore, and that sucks. I'm sorry. But this is my life we are talking about here, tourist. Flood the armory. Please. me and I really ring the bells. Every walker in a five mile radius will descend upon this place and tear everyone apart. You don't want to do that. Just because we're safe in here doesn't mean you can ring that bell and kill all those people. Is that you, tourist? Oh, thank God. Look, you have to talk some sense into her. If she rings that bell... Didn't you hear them out there? Needlessly slaughtering each other when they should be unified. They have always been stupid and cruel. Even before the world went to shit. Their fucked up philosophies. Their petty treachery. Even the innocent. Their pathetic desperation. They all twisted my priorities. Blinded me to the truth. I should have been looking after me and mine all along. I allowed them to take. What's done is done. I ain't got nothing left.
Southern Bump, 421, Suppress, Rampart, Weapon Hall Discovered, Bywater, East Side Narrow, 113, Control, Old Town. We cannot be afraid to ignite our passions, even in the midst of the nightmare. No. It is precisely then when the nightmare crawls our day. listening will no doubt recall the campfire tale of Charlie Boy, who made it. If it keeps on raining, levee's gonna break. If it keeps on raining, levee's gonna break. The water come in, have no place to stay. Keeps on raining, levee's gonna break. The water come in, I have no place to stay. <laughs> 